Come on, you younglings. Yes, we're promoted to League One. But today, it's time to win the league. It's time to win League Two. We've won the National League South. Now let's add another title to our belt. Does it really count as a t It does count as a title. Top of the league. You get a you get a big shiny cup. You get a medal. Do you get medals? I think you get medals. That would be brilliant for our trophy cabinet. So we go into these three games. Four points clear of Shrewsbury Town, or Shrewsbury Town, however you want to pronounce him. Nine points clear of Accrington Stanley. So it's basically between us and Shrewsbury. Three games to go. Surely we can't mess this up. I know we lost the last game 4-0 because we were in our flip-flops, but I've got the guys back in from on holiday. There's no flip-flop wearing today. We're going to go and beat Wimbledon. Fleetwood Town and Bury will get as many points as required to win the league. By the way, we've actually managed to pick up a record number of yellow cards this season in League 2. We've picked up, it was ridiculous, let me just find it. There we go, worst League 2 record for discipline. 102 yellow cards this season. What the hell have we been doing? Five red cards as well. That is impressive, it just shows that's why, for example, Reese Walker's picked up a three game ban for 15 yellow cards. Greg Cross managed that a few games ago. I, well, this formation change, this tactical change has meant that we're very mm, attacking in terms of beating players up essentially. And maybe that's why we've won the league. We've won it dirty. And I don't think the other teams will really like us for that fact. But at the same time, we've scored so many goals. We've won games. We've almost won the record number of games. We deserve to go up, I think. <laughs> So this is the team I'm going with to take on the Wombles of Wimbledon. We're going with Subzelis in goal, Dean by Lofts Cross, Dibber, Murray and Marlow. So I've gone for a different midfield. Diaz is on the bench. Palmer, Orford and Drury are back up front together. They're the three strikers in form at the moment, I think. Drury less so. Palmer, 12 goals this season. Can he try and catch up with Udder's 16 goals? Of course, udder has been injured for a long time now, but he got to that 16 goal mark. And now all the other players are trying to catch up with him. I don't think it's going to happen, but let's see. Please smash that like button for an incredible achievement this season. We are promoted to League One. Truly, truly astonishing stuff from us. Considering where we've come from, considering episode eight, if it wasn't for Dr. Jones, we wouldn't even be here. We would. This, these players wouldn't exist. They'd have all been dead. This parallel universe would not exist. But we've managed to to create something from this. We, got, we won the National League South in our fourth season. We managed to get promoted from the National League via the playoffs in our, was it our sixth season. And now, in our eighth season, we're about to be promoted. Well, we've already been promoted to League One and possibly we could be champions. Look at that Jack Young stand. It's glorious. It is beautiful. And that's the hard work of these players. That We wouldn't have that stand without these players. We wouldn't have that stand without you marvellous fans. So thank you so much for your contribution to Regen Rovers. Ooh, next season, I'm excited for League One. Like, where are we going to finish, though? That's the question. Will it be a struggle? Or will is there a huge amount of difference between League One and Two? I know there's some big teams that have, of course, been relegated to League One all the way down from the Premier League in recent years. But... Uh, they might not actually be... Oh, we're 1-0 down already. Great. <laughs> but they might not actually be in um, League One anymore. The likes of Sheffield United, I suppose, as an example. That was terrible. 30 seconds in, we've conceded a goal. <laughs> what is going on? Wimbledon have something to play for. They're trying to get into the playoffs. We do have something to play for. We have the league title to play for. But whether I can actually tell my players that's the case or not... In real life, I'd be going like, let's win this league for the fans. But the game already thinks I'm, well, it's, it knows I'm already promoted. So the players kind of switch off, I think. And suddenly, without Reese Walker at the back as well, Charlie Lofts is back, which is good. But we are being murdered. Nothing is happening. We've had zero shots. They are all over us. Going to go, we're going to go standard for the time being. They're playing a 4-4-2 formation, so that might be the problem. Maybe, I don't know. We didn't like 4-4-2 on the previous tactic, but it's not been so bad this season. We're going to close down more and use tighter marking, I think. The Wombles of Wimbledon. Dun, 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 dun. 
Dun 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 bam ba dum 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 bam. Wimbledon coming forward still, all over us. We've I don't know what's wrong. Suddenly, we're two 0 down. I can't explain it. Reese Walker must be very important to our back line because whenever we've oh, and Danny White, whenever one of those or both of them have been injured this season, we have fallen apart at the back. Literally been awful. And some for some reason we can't seem to score going forwards either. But perhaps nope. Palmer just loses the ball. I, I don't. What's going on, guys? Look, I know we've got promoted, but I wanted to win the league. Danny by clears, but no one's there. Palmer, if this was earlier in the season, you'd have been running for that. But now you're in your flip flops, in your sandals. It's disgraceful behaviour. And this is oh, Sibzella saves it. This is ridiculous. I'm going to pull Drury back. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that we're going to get murdered and it's going to be another bottle job. <laughs> I don't want to throw this league title away. We've been top for the last few games now. Let's go back to attacking. Fortunately, Shrewsbury are still uh, are only drawing at the moment. I think that was an atrocious, atrocious cor corner as well. And here comes Clark for Wimbledon. It's just been terrible. We could win this league just because Shrewsbury throw it away. Palmer corner, near post, Lofts can't win it. It's knocked back in, but it's way too high for anyone else. And now Wimbledon can counter-attack once again. <sighs> okay, well, I'm going to rip into them at half-time. It's not good enough. And this is going to be three. Oh, it's a good save by Sivzelis at the near post. Maybe he still has a part to play. In the last episode, I was asking you guys about Sivzelis. What do we do with him? I don't know. Do we... I mean, will he be our backup keeper going forwards? Or will he still be number one next season? I guess I have to see who he can find in the goalkeeping department. Because it's quite hard to find. All the regen goalkeepers, of course, they're, they're still young. And a lot of goalkeepers don't really become top quality players until their late 20s. Aggressive, where is your passion, lads? Going to take Orford off. We're going to bring on Brady Chick. Diaz is going to play behind as an advanced playmaker. And we're going to work it through the middle. Mixed passing. Let's play some balanced width rather than fairly narrow. They seem to be destroying us down the wing, so maybe I should pull them out a bit further. Okay, let's play for some pride and try and get back into this game. We're at home. It's our last home game of the season. The fans are saying thank you for this incredible season. Thank you for getting us promoted. But the players aren't really repaying that today. Shrewsbury are now winning. They were losing at one point, but now it looks like they're only one point behind us. So it's all to play for in the last couple games. Let's make the last sub. Joe Mohammed's going to come on as a poacher. I'm going to knock it long to, to, to Brady Chick. This was in a way worse than the 4-0 loss. Actually, I don't think it was. It was just as bad. We've just been lucky not to concede more goals. But going forwards, we have been terrible. And nothing's happened in this second half. Danny Boy still somehow picked up a 7.1. But that's it. That's a really, really disappointing 2-0 defeat. It's weird how this can happen. I'm going to have a team meeting, in fact. Because now we're only one point ahead with two games to go. Team meeting. I can't have a team meeting. Well, that's unfair. The legend that is Dr. Jones is out with food poisoning. Please don't die on me, Dr. Jones. You're still a legend of the club. Gordon, Sheriff, Mills, Young, DJ. Go! Oh, my freaking days! I've tied up quite a few contracts already, by the way, and also staff contracts. There's some big staff contracts out there, but we, it's important to the development of our club. Con constantly scouting players as well, looking for the best players possible, because I've put together a good team. Some of these players have developed into strong players, haven't they? And obviously, they're good enough because we've won League 2. Well, we haven't won League 2 yet. I'm getting ahead of myself because we've still got two games to go and it's not looking good now. Bradley Berry's out for three to four weeks. He's always picking up knocks. He had a good spell in the first team and then picked up an injury. Now he's got injured again after just coming back because he scored three goals in the first team in eight appearances. That's really impressive. He's had a very good season for the under-23s as well, as you can see there. So he still ha has a part to play at the club. Fleetwood Town away from home then. We've never lost against them. Two wins and two draws. So today we will definitely lose because we had that situation with Mansfield as well. Uh, we're still without Reese Walker. He'll be able to play the last game of the season, but not today. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to put Miguel in for Murray and Marlowe's going to come out for Diaz. I want to give Miguel some time in the first team. He's 
impressed at under 23 level he's still only 19 he's about he's going to be 20 soon but he's been around it seems like forever because he was only he'd only just turned 17 when he came from Dorchester town he's played I mean this season's the most games he's played for the first team 20 he's much improved average rating for the under 23s he's been pretty good as well though it's not showing there for some reason there we go it shows here he's put in a very good average rating and 10 assists for the under 23s He's he's a decent player. He's just got attributes in some strange places. A ball in midfield with seven on tackling doesn't really look great. But we'll we'll give him a go today. Up front, I'm gonna go with Joe Mohammed. We'll give him a go. Try and get him back into his scoring boots. Oli Barber's having a good time out on loan at York City. Actually, good average rating. His attributes are going up. He could maybe be a more important player for us next season although his position he doesn't fit into the team really that's the problem here we go then Shrewsbury are taking on bottom of the table Oldham Athletics so they're gonna win that we're away from home we're we've had a terrible two games because we're all already on the beach the strikers aren't scoring and that's possibly the most annoying thing that they just haven't scored it's really weird that it's very unusual for me to go two games without scoring basically so I'm tempted to go overload and just go for it. Throw everything at them at the start of this game and hope for the best. That's a bit of a gun-ho attitude, but maybe that's the correct attitude at this stage. I really do want to win the league. Show the world what it takes. That's what I'm going to go for. And we're just going to... Yeah, we're just going to throw everything at them at the start of this game. Take more risks. Roam from positions, be more expressive. Let's just play the Regen Rovers way that we're all accustomed to. But Fleetwood already have the ball in an advanced position and that's 1-0. It's really bizarre when things just stop working for you and that you cannot explain it. Like It's just not working, quite clearly. We're just conceding goals and it's really weird and really annoying. But maybe we can counter here. Lee Orford, up the pitch to Joe Mohammed. What's he going to do? He's going to hopefully find Palmer. Oh, yes, 1-1. One, one. We're back in it. Maybe this will be very end-to-end -end with me going overload. 1-1. One, one. We're back. Well, we'd actually drop temporarily down to second position. But we're back up to first. Here's Danny Bai. Into Diaz. Dibba. Through to Greg Cross. If we can take a lead, then I will be a bit more reserved, I think. Greg Cross... That was really weird. What even was that? Fleetwood on the ball again, coming forwards, but Greg Cross intercepts. Mohammed's through. Mohammed, Joe Mohammed, Palmer. 2 1. 2 1. Palmer gets his 14th goal of the season, his second of the day. Can he catch up with Udda? Now, we are going back to attacking and we're going to just retain possession. Let's try that. Just hold on to this now. We're 2 1 up. Control the game, guys. Still being quite attacking, but not, not ridiculous. Oh, Shrewsbury must be losing. They're on 80 points. We can win the league today. Mohamed, weird corner, but we're on. We're still got a chance here. Craig Palmer, Danny Bai slams it home. And Palmer, that was his 19th assist. He's broken the record. What a strike from Danny Bai, though. He's absolutely banged it home. Miguel headed it into Danny Bai. 1-2 with Palmer. And look at this. The captain slams it home. He's determined to win this league title. Craig Palmer is having a brilliant end to the season, isn't he? Because he's scoring goals, he's broken the assist record. It's a very similar season to Lee Orford's one last year, really. Let's keep it up. Let's, well, we might as well keep attacking, to be honest, for the time being, and try and get a fourth and really kill this game off. And at the moment, of course, we're winning the league if the results stay... The same way. How much are Oldham winning by? They are winning 2-1. Ah, they came from behind as well. Brilliant stuff. We are going to make a change. Leoford's going to come off for Brady Chick. And I'm actually going to take Mohammed off for Spencer Drury. Actually, let's bring Jack Young on. Let's give him another chance. Maybe I should be a little bit more reserved now. We're in, we're t there's, there's two... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, 3-2. Oh, it's offside. Uh, we're going to go counter. We've we've been let off there because that would have been a right old difficult end to the game if they'd scored if that had counted. Ah, Shrewsbury have scored. They've equalised, which means we haven't won the league today as it stands, and our goal difference is worse than theirs. So we will have to get something on the last day of the season. But this has been a much much improved game from us. Palmer with two goals, Danny By with one, 
really pleasing stuff. Oh, and Mullen just knocks that wide. But we've won. Three won. Very happy with the guys, and that's boosted their morale back up again. Three points ahead with one game to go. However, their goal difference, if we lose and Shrewsbury win, we finish second. So it has gone down to the wire, but it is still, it's, it's so close, so close. Palmer was, what a performance from him. Two goals and an assist, which means he has broken the record. He's got 19 assists in one season. Brilliant from him. Let's just have a look. Most assists, Craig Palmer, 2023-24 slash seasons. So Orford's record only lasted a year. And Craig Palmer, what a, what a season from him. 14 goals as well. His second top goal scorer. He's boosted his average rating. He's possibly, he could be player of the season. Maybe better than Larry Udder. Because Larry Udder, of course, got 16 goals. He's top scorer at the moment, but he only got five assists. So, hmm, it's going to be close. I think, um, realistically, Danny Byer is going to get player of the season. But amongst you guys, when I do the, the poll on Twitter, it's often not usually the person that gets the highest average rating that gets, apart from last season, Lee Orford, of course, he deserved it. Just had a situation arise. Not great timing from Mr. Charlie Lofts. Just as we're building up to this crucial last game of the season to try and confirm ourselves as champions comes to me and says he's not had enough football and there's a few unhappy players like likes of Tim Green, Miguel, Alex Hall, Murray and Arthur Owusu, basically players on the periphery of the team. Uh, the players in support of me were Danny Bay and Reese Walker who of course Charlie Loft is trying to dislodge from the centre-back position. So I just said to them, you know, if you're going to have to be dropped if I include Charlie Loft and they were all okay with that and that's Seems to have rectified the situation. I remember, was it FM16? You could just get sacked because players would overreact like that and the whole team would gang up on you. It'd be a mutiny. Ridiculous. It's not so bad on FM17, though, I found. Under-23s have managed to thrash another team. Brady Chick decided to give him some game time in the under-23s and he scored a hat-trick. Brilliant stuff from him. I don't know if the under-23 season is finished. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, it has. And... Ah, oh, we missed that by two points. We were top for pretty much the whole season. That is really unlucky. And then Wimbledon. The Wombles of Wimbledon have overtaken us just towards the end. That's really unfortunate. It was just a couple of defeats towards the end. Well, one defeat there, 2-1. 5-1 um, defeat and a 4-1 defeat against Wimbledon. That was really the killer, I suppose. We only lost three games all season, though. And they were towards the end. Very unfortunate for the end of 23s, but incredible season from them you can see top goal scorer was mr jack young some of you are probably questioning jack young and there will be some pragmatic fans that will probably want to get rid of jack young you know no sentiment you, you guys want to forget about the past and move forwards he's now 25 years old so he's in his mid-20s it's amazing that we've now reached that stage where a couple of our players jack young grant wolves obviously left he would have been 25 they were born on the same day uh idris ulukunli he's 25 a player that we probably should be releasing. I have, why am I keeping him? There's absolutely no reason to keep him. Um, so I'll probably release him in the summer. Unless there's an absolute outcry in the comment section below to keep him. But Jack Young has had a phenomenal goal scoring season for the under 23s. It shows at this level he's brilliant. He is too good for the under 23 level really. But he's not good enough for the first team. However we do need the under 23s to be performing well. Because it gives, them, gives certain players a boost ready for the first team. So... It's important not to completely decimate this team because there are players that are on the periphery wanting to break into the first team. They're getting confidence by winning really big games, you know, by huge score lines. Uh, Arthur Owusu as well has come in, been brilliant. Hasn't quite managed it for the first team in his six sub appearances, but perhaps next season he'll be able to break into the first team and play well because of his performances at this level. Bradley Berry, brilliant as well, 16 goals, 20 assists. Brady Chick, when he's played, 15 goals in almost, it's almost a goal a game for him. So it's phenomenal stuff. Even Dan Ormsby got nine goals at this level, and he's not really played at this level for, for a while. And he's come into the team this year, into the under 23 starting lineup at times and score goals this is huge this is absolutely massive for us we can also set a record number of wins or joint record number of wins in league two on this save Siv Zellis is about to equal oh no because Jack Young's played a couple more games so he's still three games ahead of Siv Zellis and Palmer 
very close to an all-time record of uh, there's ni- 19 is the record number of assists in league two so he's two behind he's not going to get a hat-trick of assists surely nervous now as we creep towards kickoff time Da-da-da. at least we know we're promoted going into this last day that is so pleasing it really is and shrewsbury are taking on mansfield town who are ninth mansfield can get into the playoffs they're two points behind whereas our opposition bury it's too much for them. They're five points behind. So it's all to play for for Mansfield. They beat us. Let's hope they can now and be, go and beat Shrewsbury. And I'm going to be going with this lineup. In fact, I can't. Kevin McGill. Why did I play him in the under 23s? That was an error. I'm going to put Christian Marlowe in the middle. Ever reliable, apart from last season, of course. Sibs Ellis in goal. Dean. Danny White. Reese Walker's back from his three match suspension. That is massive because without him, we are a liability at times at the back. Greg Cross is going to be playing left back. Dibba, Marlow and Diaz in the middle. Diaz is about to make his 50th start of the season. Palmer, Orford and I'm going with Spencer Drury up front. He's, he's started 20 games and he's been off the bench 20 times this season. We're going to end that symmetry and play him today. Massive call because he, we know how unreliable he can be. But we've got Mohamed... Jack Young and Brady Chick on the bench. I was tempted to put Arthur Awusu on the bench, but he hasn't proven himself at first team level quite yet to really warrant being on the bench. It's good to see Jack Young has managed to get a goal this season because I was, at one point I was worrying he won't get his goal. He's scored in every single season for us now, so we have to try and keep that going for as long as possible. This is it then. Oh, it's massive. A draw guarantees us the title, but perhaps Mansfield can do us a favour. We might not even need to get a draw. Remember, the team basically have been playing in flip-flops, apart from the last game, since that title win, and it's been a bit of a struggle at times. It was a very pleasing win in the last game, though. We were comfortable. Strange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go counter, and we're going to try and hit them on the break. Counter direct, and, and we'll turn up the tempo. There I am, standing nervously on the sidelines, on the touchline. Here we go, then. I'm nervous. I really want to win the title. Second place, just, it's not going to be good enough now. I want Danny By to lift that trophy up. Walker pumps it up the pitch. Oh dear, they've they've won the ball and here they here they can attack. Charging forwards down the right hand side. Everest, but Diaz steps in. It's back to Marlowe, back into Diaz. Maybe this will be an opportunity. Offered Marlowe, Dibber, plays it through. Here's Spencer Drury! Oh, he takes his chance. He takes it. It's his twelfth goal of the season. He's Mr. Inconsistent, isn't he? One on ones he hates. But this one he manages to find the back. It's a superb assist from Dibber as well. And Drury sticks it through the keeper. I think the keeper actually ran through him as well. And we're 1-0 up early on. That direct pass from Dibber worked its wonders. Dibber's been great this season. Could easily be player of the season on the Twitter poll. I'll put that up on Twitter after this episode's gone live. Here's Marlowe into Orford. Dibba! Oh, what a strike! What a strike! His eighth goal of the season. He's just put his foot through that. He's put everything into that shot to win us the title. He's just determined to slam that into the back of the net. It's an assist from Warford as well. Nice little side foot with the outside of his foot. And Dibba just smashes it home. He's been he's been really good this year. <sighs> good tackle there, but. Barry on the attack, Walker heads away, but Everest can whip it in, and that's somehow over the bar. What a miss. Here's Marlowe. Can we kill this game off early on? Dibber into Diaz. Through to Lee Offord. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Spencer Drury. He does miss that one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I said. He's missed it inconsistent. Does look like Larry Wood is going to finish top goal scorer. I can't see Palmer scoring a hat-trick from here to overtake Larry Wood as our top scorer if Larry Uda had stayed fit he he could easily have reached 25 goals this season possibly 30 league one's going to be tough though every every league's tough but we found league two quite easy in a way we've finished high up both times so zealous easily saves that as well it's been comfortable for us so far today although they have had the same number of clear cut and half chances as us if they're taking their chances it would be level keep going guys let's just turn down the tempo now Half time. Do I make any subs? I'm going to bring on Charlie Loss for Greg Cross, who's on a yellow card. I don't want him to to get sent off and ruin our chances here. Okay, Charlie Loss with the throne into Marlow. What's Loss going to do? It's into Diaz. Even though Loss has been a bit annoying this week in asking for first team football, I thought he's a good option to come off the bench. Here's Christian Marlow, Diaz, Orford, 
Diaz. This is nice play. Keeping hold of possession. This is wonderful stuff. Lee Orford finds Palmer. It's through to Dipper, who scores his second of the game, and Palmer gets another assist for us this season. That's 20 assists. And he's only one behind the League 2 record now, I think. Orford into Palmer. Lovely, but when Dibba, once again, he's just struck it sweetly into the back of the net. And that surely has killed this game off. So Zellis blasts the ball up the pitch. Orford. Dibba wins the header. Lee Orford through to Craig Palmer. Can he get another assist here? He's put a ball in. Oh, it's in the back of the net. Was it Spencer Drury? It is. It's his 13th goal of the season, so I assume that's an assist for Palmer. I think he's equaled the League 2 record. He's just got so many assists from that advanced forward role this season. It's quite remarkable, really. It's a great ball in. It's a, uh, What a cross. It's caused all sorts of problems. It's actually come off a defender, so maybe it's not Palmer's assist. Yeah, but no, he has got two assists today. That's good. And Drury's got two goals as well. I'm going to take Lee Orford off. He's got an assist. Hasn't had... Actually, no, we'll leave him on. I want him to try and get another goal. Uh, we will take off Diaz. I don't know who to bring off. Let's bring on Tim Green. Let's make a defensive change. I don't always make defensive changes, do I? What a performance from us to round off this season and win the title in style. The helicopter's coming. We heard it earlier. It's Grant Wall's bringing the trophy to Berry. He's got it in his hands, ready to hand over to Danny By And me, of course, as well. I need to lift the trophy, don't I? Get my hands on that League 2 trophy. But Berry are coming forwards. They're trying to score a goal. Get a consolation. Oh, it's wide. Sivzelis pumps it up the pitch. Orford. Don't think he's going to get another goal. I could bring Spencer Drury off. But he probably deserves the chance at a, a hat-trick, I guess. Pumped up the pitch. I, I think I should bring Jack Young on. Maybe for Sp Let's bring Spencer Drury off. Because he's got a couple goals. That's 4-1. They've got a goal back. Lee Orford's... Uh, is he going to get a goal today? I don't think he will. Let's bring Jack Young on for Lee Orford. And I'm going to swap Palmer and Orford. And Palmer's going to play as a deep line forward behind Young and Spencer Drury. Come on, Jack Young. Get a goal to round this day off. Free kick. Craig Palmer all the way back to Danny By Into Tim Green, who skips through but unfortunately gives the ball away. Berry looking to get a second. It's pumped up the pitch. Oh, good defending by Reese Walker. The keeper's come out. It's back up the pitch. And here, oh, Marlow steps in. This is not great football, to be honest. Diaz now. Nice ball into Drury. Into Craig Palmer. Who, oh, that's a crunching tackle, but we're still on the ball. Tim Green can whip across in. It's in to Dipper. It's through to Palmer, who gets a goal. Oh, he deserved that. It's his 15th goal of the season. He's only one behind Udda now. Let's go attacking. Let's see if we can get another goal. Perhaps we can. It's a highlight straight away. Although it might be a goal for Barry now that I've gone attacking. Here they come. Looking dangerous. This is... Oh, it's over the bar. We've both had 15 shots today, but Barry have had more clear-cut chances. We've just been clinical in front of goal. Here's Dibber. Can't find Palmer. Looking for another goal. And here they come. Looking for a second consolation goal. It probably is going to be one here. Oh, it's a good solid save, but I'm going to go counter. It's a bit... They're all over us now. I've gone attacking. Crossed in. Dibba. Brilliant. Steps in. Can clear up the pitch. Lots of highlights towards the end of this game. Diaz, good header there. What a performance to end the season. Two goals and two assists for Patrick Dibba. What a stellar performance. And Palmer, of course, with two assists and a goal as well. Magnificent stuff from the two. And, and Spencer Drew with two goals. This is going to be the final whistle any second. Oh, Siv Zealous rounds it off with a good catch. That was another clear-cut chance. And we've won 5-1. That's our, is that our biggest win of the season? Possibly. I'm very, very pleased. Man of the match, of course. Patrick Dibber, 9.6. 9.3 from Palmer. Drury got a 9.2. Lee Orford got an 8.1. There will be a season review. Episode 76 will be... We have to review this season because it's been phenomenal. We've, we're champions. 87 points. 24 wins this season. That's a joint record. 15 draws. We only lost 7 games. We finished on a plus 23 goal difference after a very impressive attacking display. As you can see, Shrewsbury had an incredibly defensive season only conceding 36 goals we were all about the goals what a brilliant 
brilliant game to round off this season. I'm very pleased with that. So make sure you check out episode 76 where we will analyse some of the players' performances, see who was top scorer, top assist, top average rating, who won the, the game's player of the season, and, and a few other things as well. So keep an eye out for that. Please smash that like button for this incredible achievement. We're going up as champions. League One, here we come. Debar, oh, what a strike!